This is gonna be weird. I don't dare monitor it with my uh, Surface Pro 3. Hey guys in chat, I hope you can hear us. I'm going to type here for a uh, sound check, video check, guys, because we were having some problems. I wonder if, um, I wonder what happened last week, honestly. Hello, gentlemen. Well, there's Jim. Good evening. Oh, I'm sorry, you're live. We are live. I just hit the button, Jim. Oh, okay, good. I just hit the button. Sorry about it, that. What's that? I said sorry about that. Oh, no. <laughs> You're never going to guess. Um, okay, I, I must have had two issues last night, or last week, because we, I just found one was is the Surface Pro 3. I swear I podcasted with my other Surface Pro 3, hmm. but I can't remember if I did or not. So I just took that out of the loop, and now this is on the Mac, unfortunately. I'm looking at you here, but the camera's Yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and well. Everything's fine. Weird. Well, that's okay. Give us a week off. So uh, i got a lot of explaining to do. Next yeah, podcast. got some explaining. <laughs> but uh, I did have internet outage. So, I mean, yeah. it must have all happened at once. It must have been like the perfect storm. I'm at work. How's my audio? Am I great. okay? Okay. You sound great. great. All right. Video good. is awesome too. Oh, good. Yeah. You're, I couldn't ask for better video today from both of you guys. It's it's just. In fact, Kevin had a little schmutz right here on. It is. Head. You know. <laughs> should have should have cleaned up kind of cleaned up a little better I after dinner. See the schmutz. Uh, well, I'm at. I've got the full bandwidth of Gallant, so it's it's uh it's it should be pretty good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, Google Doc is up. Oh yeah, let me jump into that. Um, it's quite it's quite uh, lengthy, but all right, that's fine. Well, we owe Home Server Show a a podcast, so let us get rolling. I just one button. I don't have to hit anything else. I'm weird. It's all crazy because I'm on. I'm not doing it like I used to do it. Okay. <laughs> this is the Home Server Show, episode number 264, recorded on July 8th, 2014. Welcome back to the Home Server Show. I'm your host, David McCabe. We are live on YouTube, and you can watch this. If you're listening to it on audio, you can always watch the Home Server Show on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com slash home server show. But I think it's been like three weeks since I've talked with you last. But I've got hopefully a great show with you. Got always my co-host, Mr. Jim Collison. How are you doing tonight, Jim? Hey, Dave. I'm doing well. Coming in from Gallup tonight. I had a conference call right up until the time we got started. So I appreciate you waiting for me. You bet. Well, and I waited for you because I was having technical issues. Oh, good. Um, not, not so last good. week we we were actually going to podcast. I know we were ready, and then it just jettisoned on us. The whole thing, the whole core, just came right out. It did. It did, and it was all my fault. My, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that here in a second. But also, I, I don't want to forget, I've got Mr. Kevin Schoonover. He's joining us tonight to tell us about a server. Hello, Kevin. Hey, how you guys doing? Very good. It's good to have you in here. So, last week, I mean, so I've had, I just wrote this in the show notes as craziness. I've been doing so many things all at once, and it all just kind of came together uh, in the last couple of weeks. So we had, uh, I, I've, I've been doing a domain change. This is the first time for me to ever do a URL change of a live website and to do Google 301 redirects and try not to lose, you, you know, your shirt in the meantime. So I was doing that. All kinds of hell broke loose. I mean, I had all kinds of trouble. And there was one Tuesday, two weeks ago, uh, we had a tornado. Just right here in town. Just just dropped down and said, hey, how you doing? I'm going to tear up some stuff. And uh, So we had a tornado. My my son is pl was playing baseball. The thing was is he was playing tournament baseball. So it was uh, win and move on. Lose and you're out of here. Well, he kept winning. <laughs> and so I'm coaching too. So I'm on this team and they kept winning. 
and they kept winning, and they kept winning. So they'd win, we'd have a rain out. They'd win, we'd have a rain out, and it just kept going and going and going. It was crazy. And then last week, the perfect storm. We sit down to do a podcast. I click. Jim and I are just talking back and forth. Everything's just gorgeous. And then I click start broadcast. And he's like, man, your, inner, your video just kind of got funny. And sure enough, uh, 15 minutes later, my internet was out, down, gone, nada. And uh, so I rearranged my desk for the whole evening. The internet came back the next morning. So it was a it was a bona fide outage, huh? It was a bona fide outage. It was it was an outage. So 15 minutes ago, Kevin and I are setting up this podcast, and I'm just he's like, "Dude, your video sucks. Your video sucks." And so everything just started happening all at once, and it the Google dropped my call. And it was and I was like, "You know what? I'm just gonna try something." So I was on the Surface Pro 3. That's my desktop. This is my desktop. My brand new Surface Pro 3. So I switched over to the Mac. I have the iMac over here that I use uh, for certain things. And so that's what we're podcasting on tonight. So I also run this little show called uh, Surface Geeks. So I do have some explaining to do uh, next podcast. So let's get let's get moving. Um, we have a lot to go through, and I'm going to try to try to go through this fast. So. I want to tell you that uh, you can follow on Twitter, twitter.com slash home server show. If you want to keep up with what's going on, what I'm tearing up, and uh, who we're going to be talking with, who Jim and I are going to be are raking over the coals on the next podcast. Um, I want to tell you, I want to talk about the meetup. I want to give you a count. But first, first of all, I want to tell you that this show is brought to you by Amazon. That, that doesn't happen a lot, guys. To have Amazon on board. Well, they don't really know they're on board with the home server show. We're just kind of sneaking this in here. Homeservershow.com slash prime. Now, if you don't subscribe subscribe to Prime, I don't know why. You should. You should subscribe to Prime. Not only can you get is my Twitter wall up? Okay, my Twitter wall's up. Squirrel. Tweet home server show. You can get on the Twitter wall back here. <laughs> um, do you guys subscribe to Prime? Who subscribes to Prime? I do. Kevin? Yep. I'm in. No. Kevin, I want it's you to go great. to homeservershow.com slash Prime and start your 30-day free trial. Okay, you can stream TV. Now, here's why you're going to do this this summer. If If you're kind of crazy like me, you're watching a TV show called uh, Under the Dome. Well, Amazon gets it. As soon as the episode airs, Amazon gets it. So you can go back and catch up and watch all the previous episodes of Under the Dome. It's written by Stephen King. It's kind of a fun show. Um, but you, know, you get you know movies, TV. Um, you get all kinds of content for your your readers, your your Kindles, and you get uh, free two day shipping on pretty much everything. The coolest thing is, is you buy something. And you can say, okay, shit, I want this tomorrow. And you pay 3 or $4 extra per item, and you can get it overnighted. This is going to cost you $99 a year. $99 a year, but you're also going to get music with it too. So they have free streaming radio, tons of music. It's, it's just a great deal. Homeservershow.com slash prime. You got you to gotta try it. Dave, they got music now too uh, through Prime. If if you haven't checked that out yet, I'm actually going to use that. I'm I'm DJing a wedding here in a couple weekends, and I'm going to load up all the music on my on my Android uh, phone and run the whole thing from there. And it costs you no extra. So, if you were in the in the Amazon ecosystem, or even if you're not and you're on Prime, just about any music you need now available on Prime. Yeah, it's a great service. And I have a Roku. Actually, I have two Roku's now. And there's an Amazon Prime button in there. And you just go to it, and all your Prime is there. So you can you can get everything. It's awesome. So go do that. Also, I've got uh, DrivePop.com. DrivePop is offering one terabyte of lifetime um, backup storage. Now, I had this ad all set up for last week. And DrivePop said, hey, we'll, they'll extend it. So I don't know how long it's going to be extended. <clears throat> Link will be in the show notes. And you go there, you you can get I think it's thirty nine ninety nine, 
and you get one terabyte of lifetime service. Excuse me. It's backed by Live Drive. Live Drive has a Windows Phone app. They have um, Android, iOS, uh, Windows 8. It works on Windows 8. They have RT. You can get it all there, and it pretty much it's just a backup for your PC. It backs all your stuff up, and it's one terabyte for a lifetime. And if if you're gonna keep it up, it's an annual like four dollars and ninety nine cent fee. They would just want to see if you're still there, basically, uh, and and didn't just sign up and went away. So, um, but that that uh, post will be in the show notes. So, okay, meetup count. And later we're going to talk about the Lenovo TS140 server with Mr. Schoonover. So, um, drum roll, let me refresh the meetup count. Jim, what do you think it's at? I thought we were at 22 last week, so I'm going to say 30. Okay, no, it's at 24. Oh, shoot. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. 24. But, okay, this is just saying I'm going to have a meetup. That's it. That's all yeah, I've done. Said, okay, we're having a meetup for it. Yeah. So that means there's roughly 31 spots left, and once those are gone, they're gone. So I'm, I I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to sign up. It is twenty-two dollars and nine cents. I think. I think the the fees are two dollars and nine cents, and that twenty dollars goes to help uh, defer your cost of breakfast and lunch. So. That gets you in the door. If you don't pay, you, there's no there's no meetup for you. Um, there's a lot of cool things in the forums. There's a lot of cool things going on. Um, we've been talking about uh, tons of hard drives. If you were on Twitter last week with me, I just apologize. Because Schoon, he had deals. I was flying deals. Uh, Stutzman was flying deals. Everybody was just posting deals. So I apologize for your wallet issues. <laughs> My phone's ringing. Um, and I know that I know that I picked up a couple of things. So I've been buying stuff like crazy too, and I'm, I'm trying not to. But uh, it's just so much fun. Um, there were Synology updates. I know that we were looking at Jim. We were looking at doing a 4.11 uh, Slim review. I think you had one inbound to one of your readers, and I think we have one inbound to the home server show. So no, I, I never did pick one up at that point. The When I went to go get it, it wasn't available. And then i have been kind of waiting for the price to come down just a smidge. I'd heard they were going to maybe drop it again, so I was kind of waiting. So, no, I didn't pick one of those up yet. And it's that 4.14 Slim, though, isn't it? Or is it? No, you're right. It's a 4.11 Slim. You're right. 4.11? I yep. don't know. Let's uh, let's look yeah, on Amazon 11. and see what. They're like two eighty nine at this point. I think is is the last. Uh, but I I had uh, seen them a little bit cheaper. And of course, I've got a stack of uh, two and a half inch drives. That's the advantage to me of getting that slim. Is I got a stack of two and a half inch drives, and I was gonna pick one up and have it shipped in and uh, and give it a try. Just take it down now and then it's Yeah, I'm up. seeing. Uh... Wow, I'm seeing all kinds of prices. They're just everywhere. Yeah, it's it's um it's interesting. But on on Amazon where I was looking, uh, that's kind of the the piece I was looking. I did I did track it down and uh, and it got um you know it got fairly reasonable there. So it's it was worth a try. I just did I didn't pull the trigger on it. It looks like maybe they're having some uh maybe they're having trouble keeping this in stock. The they prices might. are just everywhere. I don't even want to say the price because yeah. I mean I'm seeing it from. Two twenty to three hundred something bucks. So it's crazy. I'm probably having some stock issues, but I'm trying to get one inbound so we can take a look at it. Well, and they're still running the uh, you know the two drive SE model, which is a little performance limited, but it's it's still one hundred and fifty nine bucks for Synology. So, you know, for guys that just want to experiment and don't know exactly what they want to do, it's a nice easy way to. Um, work your way into Synology without uh, too much of a commitment. Absolutely. Two ninety nine on Amazon, Dave, for the Slim. The a four a four fourteen Slim. That's the newest one. Four fourteen. That's what I thought. Four fourteen Slim is the newest one, and and uh, two ninety nine. And Kevin, you're probably talking about the DS 
two one four, right? Yep. Yes. Four one four slim. Four one four slim is the oh, I said four eleven slim. Yeah. There was a four eleven slim, but that's the older version. The four one four is I'm, the current I'm version. Doing old yep. school here, yeah. Yep. I dropped a link. Okay, good. good. Folks, we'll I was go just trying to that. maybe find if I could see some uh, get some stock here. Yeah, we actually had uh, so there's the 414, the regular 414 that that takes the full size drives uh, that's out, and I uh, had some chat with um, and actually there's an upgrade to that as well, and I have to pull the numbers out, but I, I somebody asked me on Twitter the difference between the two. Uh, the newer version of that has an upgraded processor as well as twice the RAM in there, and uh, it was eighty dollars more. And so the question was, you know, for it actually had an additional. It was a dual gigabit as well. So the question was for an extra port, more processing power, twice the RAM. Was it worth the eighty bucks? And uh, and that listener uh, chose yes. It's worth the eighty bucks. I, I I don't like to make those decisions for people. <laughs> Were you hearing uh, my head rattle? I'm like, yeah, I saw I saw you moving that up and down. Yes, and yes. so it's like, yeah, that would be that would be good. Um, yeah, so, you're right. And and so the four fourteen and the four fourteen J, those were the two that we were comparing. So one of the hidden benefits, of, I believe, any of the Synology boxes that have dual Ethernet ports um, support uh, the synchronization between the two boxes. So for small businesses, it's really worth the 80 bucks. You can put two of them side by side and have a mirror, or put them on opposite ends of uh, you know a building. Uh, so it gives you some nice uh, mirroring capabilities for not a lot of money. Yeah, and I found the DS two fourteen SE on Amazon as well. Um hundred hundred fifty three bucks. So you're right. Uh it's just that's just a, a drop in the bucket to actually test out their latest uh uh disk storage management DSM and you know, get your hands on a on a Synology. I know a lot of folks buy that and they end up, you know, buying a bigger one. So buying a five slot, a four slot or an eight bay. So uh, it's real good stuff. So uh, meet up again. We have uh, 24 guys here, and maybe maybe we can get Synology to bring us uh, a slim or two or three. So we'll try. We will try. I uh, I've heard rumors that uh, there'll be a special prize for the uh, holder of ticket number one. Ticket number one. Should I? Uh... Should I look back to see who the first ticket buyer was? Uh, it's a guy who spends too much time on the web. <laughs> yes, um, ticket one. Actually, in Eventbrite, ticket one is always the last ticket sold. Ooh, I so see. You, you now stand at 24, but I can tell that you bought yours at on June 12th. At 11:42 a.m., so you were first, sir. <laughs> you were first. You even beat me. I bought my ticket 11:45 um, a.m. Three minutes. You beat me by three minutes. And uh, Stutzman was an hour later. So you do have that distinction. Uh, September 20th. There's a lot of information in the forums if you're wondering about uh, meetup or if you're listening for the first time. We do hold an annual gathering of geekness and uh, have a good time. So check the forums and you'll hear all about that. <clears throat> okay, I've got roughly 40 minutes with you guys. This is the most time I've had ever. So I would like to... Um, I want to do like a, like a home automation corner with you. Um, Kevin and I participate in a forum called uh, homeautomationforums.com. You may have heard me talk about HA forums, which it used to be haforums.com. But we throw things back and forth there quite a bit. So I had I had this instance where in my basement I have um, the lower level has an ejection pump for sewage. So there's a pit and sinks, toilets, and water all go to this pit. And when there's enough, it ejects it out and sends it to the city, right? 
This is not the sump. This is not the sump pit that catches water under the house that is, uh, you know, wanting to float your house away. This is actual sewer, sewage. So two weeks ago, my wife says, man, something smells down there. You know, something smells. Go see what that is. And I went down there. I couldn't figure it out. I, I, I don't know. You know, the, the sewage pit's sealed. So I maybe maybe something's going on. And a couple days later, is same thing. It started stinking. So I, okay, so I get in there, and I, I pull the cover off. Actually, I pull the, there's uh, electrical cables that go down to the pumps and to the float. And I, I pull that port off, and I look down there, and sure enough, it's, there's, yeah, this is a gross topic, but there's toilet paper on the float, right? So when the float gets messed up, uh, it messes up the whole mechanism. So what I did is I just, I just started the water, ran the water all the way to the top. It cleaned everything out, and the ejection pump just took off and started running. Okay, but what if I was out of town and this didn't just rectify itself? It didn't fix itself. I would have a, a big, nasty mess in my basement. Uh, I mean, nasty mess. So right then and there, um, I went and purchased a couple of water sensors because I have... A smart things install. It's a Zigbee Z-Wave uh, home automation hub that you can do, you know, locks and lights and sensors and whatnot. So this was my like first real room to do. Um, I've just been playing with it, but I said I'm going to attack this room and I'm going to create a home automation, you know, room out of this thing. So I got two water sensors uh, going in, one into the sewer pump one into the sump pump, and if the, the levels rise up to a certain level, it crosses the sensor, and it will text me. So it texts me instantly. Um, the other thing, I put in a light switch on the wall that's a Z-Wave light switch. So, yeah, the, the cool thing is, is from my phone, I can click it on, click it off. You know, click it on, click it off. Okay, that's the fun part. But... I set up a little rule that if the water sensor goes off, turn that light on. First thing, turn the light on. And then I have a little D-Link webcam inside that's just looking at my basement. And I sent a picture to Kevin. I was, I was looking <laughs> up at it. And I, I clicked the, the capture screen. And so that allows me to... <clears throat> jump in and take a look. Okay, is this a false alarm? Is this just moisture? Or is my basement actually, you know, flooding, you know, starting to flood? And I can see, you know, I know which pump sends me the alert. Um, you know, the sewer pit or the sump pump pit. I know which one sends me the alert. And, I, you know, I cannot physically do anything about it. I can't hit a button and say you know, clear the drain or turn the water off. There are methods in which you could turn water off if there was a valve, you know, running or flowing. But it would allow me either A, to hightail it home, or B, if I'm on vacation, you know, call a plumber, give him the code to get in, and turn on the cameras and watch him do the repair. I could do that. So that was my little home automation corner. Kevin finally got it going. The poop, the poop watcher. I am watching poop. <laughs> it's uh, well, and and, and uh, I did mine a while ago. Uh, I've got a, a floor drain that uh, backs up every once in a while. It's one of those that there's a tree right in front of the house, and uh, the roots grow through that line, and it never really does any damage. You just come down there one day, and the floor's wet. So same sensor that Dave is using. Um, it flags me on my phone the minute it gets wet, and uh, it you know it seems to work very very well. Um, I've also recently added a uh, garage uh, uh, electronic door lock on the uh, door between the garage to the house that automatically unlocks when it senses my wife's uh, presence sensor, 
and uh, that's that's working pretty well. And now I'm working on getting the garage door to uh, be automated as well. Uh, I've got the front lights of the house come on at dusk and shut off at 11, so it's uh, it's fun stuff. It's uh, you know I, I've kind of got all wire uh, switches in. I've got several sensors in. Uh, I've just ordered a new deadbolt for the front door uh, to replace that as well. So. Um, now I'm starting down the path of uh, automating the stuff and trying to you know get it set up into logical orders of things that I want to do with it. Yeah, it is. Um, it is fun. It can be costly, but if you do things like I'm starting to tackle you know one room at a time. You know I'm just I'm going to embrace the technology because. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes a little fiddling, and you know, I I post everything that happens with my setup, and but once it's working, it, it it's pretty rock solid. I've I've been very happy with uh, uh, mechanisms and lights and sensors, and um, the smart things set up in, in general. And so I have a couple of I have a couple of rooms I want to do. <clears throat> I want to do um, you know my outdoor lighting. I want to do my garage doors, uh, do tilt sensors and all that kind of good stuff, and uh, I'm having fun with it. So, if you think that you know this is something that maybe you guys would want to check out, it, it involves a home. So I kind of like to do a little maybe a home automation corner every once in a while, and uh, we'll talk about some home uh, automation technology uh, on Jim's podcast. Uh, Jim, you're talking about this stuff as well, and you, you've talked with Kevin about it too. Yeah, we've brought Kevin on a few times and, and bring it up, oh, probably once a quarter at this point, just kind of with the various things that we do. They blend in with uh, the various Nest products and some of those kinds of things. So we, we do cover that over at, uh, on Home Gadget Geeks. Yep, Home Gadget Geeks um, at TheAverageGuy.tv. Make sure you uh, subscribe and listen to that. We redesigned uh, AverageGuy.tv. If you head out there, brand new... Brand new front page where all the podcasts are now in view on a single page, it's, including uh, <laughs> this one, homeservershow.com. It, awesome. It's it's literally stunning. <laughs> I like it. Literally? <laughs> literally. It's stunning. Very nice. Well, it was I was trying to figure out with podcasting, with all the podcasts that I do, and I was really trying to get, find some way to get them all on the front page. You know, because a blog just doesn't really... If you have one podcast, it works great, but you know we're doing three on the network plus home server show plus I'm on um, Ask the Podcast Coach and some of those other things. So it's um, I wanted to highlight them all, and so it was just a great way to 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 use it to get all those those various shows, so to speak, in a network, kind of in a Looks network good. model. Thank Looks you. Looks great. Thank you. And someday I will finish up uh, the Geeks Network, and we'll be able to uh, get rolling on that. <clears throat> I've got. I've got so many things going on, Jim, and it's um, kind of crazy. And I kind of we lost Kevin. He's digging out. Uh, we sparked something in him, and now he's, he's digging for something. Digging through his trash over there. He's, he's got to show it. Um, <laughs> oh, there's the mic. Hey, how about you mute next time? <laughs> But you mute mute us before you knock the mic over. Right? Yeah, I'll, <laughs> mute next time. I'll, I'll mute next time before I start rambling about the room. <laughs> so, but um, theaverageguy.tv, check out those podcasts. Please listen. Please subscribe. Uh, you can catch you can catch a, both of us, all of our shows on um, on Stitcher Radio. If you like if you like to do that Stitcher thing, you can listen there or um, just um, head over to either one of the shows sites and uh, just. There's a RSS feed, so. Dave, can I throw in a quick storage-related uh, comment here as we as, as we transition? So, you know, everybody knows that I'm the Drobo guy, and uh, in last year, about this time, my kids for Father's Day bought me the Drobo 5N, the newest uh, Drobo that's got the available caching, so you can buy an MSATA card and put that in the bottom. And it's run flawlessly for a year. It's been great. Uh, throw drives. Actually, I pulled, I swap drives out of that thing all the time as I need various size drives. It's the Drobo's like the storage of, you know, so I can get storage out of it and it stores hard drives for me. And uh, and I have no problems just popping a drive out if I need one to go somewhere else. And and I got a couple terabytes on that on that Drobo. But my son actually kind of um, baited me, and we've talked about Plex both here and on my show several times. We had. 
Tony Rayner on here talking about it uh, not long ago. And, and I just didn't, I, you know, for whatever reason, I just could not get that rolling. And my son came over uh, the other night, and he was like, hey, you know, I'm trying to get, so I'm trying to get, um, he was asking me a lot of questions about the Surface 2, because I've given that to my daughter to use. And he's like, what plays on that Surface 2, you know? What, what, and, and, and I was like, well, you could kind of do this and that. And he goes, would Plex work on there? And I'm like, well, you know, thinking, well, yeah, I think. And in web mode, it would. And, and I said, I don't really want to set up a Plex server, but I know that Drobo has a Plex app associated with it that I tried several times and never really got it working. And my the big fault was I was trying to read the VOBs, you know, the, the full files, the, the uncompressed storage files. And, of course, that's you got to convert that to MKV or uh, uh, M MP4s for that to play. Those are two file formats that work out, work out real well. So I actually used Handbrake, and I converted all the Unraw stuff on the Drobo, by the way. Didn't, never took it off. Just did it right on the Drobo. Converted those all into MP4s and uh, for her, all our current videos, plus the stuff he brought over. And set those up in storage files on the Drobo and have been streaming multiple. Of course, I had to test it right around the house. So I, I started going in the web browser, and I bought the monthly Plex version. So $3.99 a month, you can go. I think it's 25 bucks a year or 75 bucks for a lifetime. And I, I'm like, well, I'll try this in the month, you know, to start with. And I'd wondered what kind of quality I was going to get out of that Drobo from a streaming standpoint. And I went around the house and just got everything streaming. You know, it's just like got all the browsers. I put it on the, the I got uh, Plex running through the browser, through IE on the Surface 2. It looked great. Mm -hmm. Got it working on her iPhone at the same time, which was kind of cool. Then I ran around to the various PCs, got running. Not no issues at all. I mean, it uh, Plex just handled that awesome. It streams very very well, and the Drobo handled the streaming of that. Uh, you know, it, fantastic. John asked me because well, he's got a bunch of movies he wanted to bring over, and he goes, he goes, you got enough room? And I'm like, dude, I got a Drobo. So, <laughs> you know, I could finally say that line. You know, I got a Drobo. We just put put more hard drives in there. If that's what we need, we'll upgrade it. So. I spent a good chunk of the last weekend, you know, I just queued them all up in Handbrake and let that thing run back to the Drobo. So it was reading it off the Drobo, then writing it right back to it. And um, and that worked out very, very well. And so I'm kind of finally, you know, I've been using that for various storage of things. But really, I keep most of my storage. Most of what I really want to keep, I keep on my Windows Server, you know, in my uh, 2011 box or on the 2012 box. Those are kind of the, those are the serious backup boxes. The Drobo's kind of been, oh, I keep things there from time, ISOs and stuff I don't really care about, you know, that much, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in, from that standpoint. But that Plex app really, really worked well in the Drobo. So just an update for everybody who knows. We, we got plenty of uh, dollar signs in the chat room, so it's like old times. Just and, uh, <laughs> say Drobo, you get dollar signs. Yeah, and actually prices have come down on Drobo's. They are pushing connected data, the company that, that kind of took over, has been pushing down Drobo prices, and I, I've seen them as cheap as you know, like two, like two ninety nine, I think, and three fifty, and for some of the for some of those devices, so they've come down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I would yeah. venture to say that the Plex app just everywhere is good. It, yeah. It just, yeah, it works great everywhere. Yeah, I didn't even on the iPhone. We didn't even buy the app. We just ran it off the browser on the iPhone, and it worked <laughs> great. That's because it's four ninety nine. You know, iPhone is the only one that doesn't have a free app if you buy the subscription. You still got to buy the app on the iPhone. Okay. And I'm like, I wonder if this will work on the browser. And we just fired it right up, hit launch. It launched the browser. Same experience as you'd get on your PC, and it just worked great. Um, let me let me caveat that and say one cool thing about Plex now is I know you guys if you if you've been listening for a long time, you've heard me talk about Tableau TV, and I don't know if you can see it. No, oh, can't see it right here. That little guy's a Tableau, and it's recording uh, TV for me right off of uh, over the air antenna. And it has no HDMI out. It has no video output whatsoever. You have to connect to it with either your tablet or your web browser. Um, I connect to it with an Android phone as well, but it's 5.2 inch. Um, they now have uh, a Roku app 
So on your Roku, you can go to your Tableau and look at Guide, look at your recorded TV, and and watch TV on the on your big screen. You don't have to push it with AirPlay. You don't have to push it with Chromecast. Um, but now they have a Plex app. So right inside of Plex, you can see live TV, recorded TV, a guide, all your recordings, all kinds of cool stuff. So Plex, uh, Plex support dropped. I think this was either today or yesterday, and uh, really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. So, you know, Jim, I'm glad you brought that up because I. Uh... I've been playing with FreeNAS a lot lately, and and FreeNAS has a plug-in for Plex, and I, I thought you know it'd probably be a little limited or a little dysfunctional. Uh, I was very surprised at how light it was. It really didn't take a lot of performance away from the box. So, um, you know, kind of regardless of what you're using for a storage device, um, Plex has done a really good job of uh, making sure the quality on these plugins and apps is is very good. So. You know, it's definitely a technology you can embrace, and if you change your storage device down the line, chances are good you're going to have a native Plex app or plug-in for it. Yeah, no, it's worked real well. Uh, Kevin, I think one of the features I liked the most was that I could log into the server online and start sharing that out to my family members. I didn't want them using my login. You know, I bought the subscription. I didn't want to have to give them my email address and password for that. So you can easily set them up in a shared status set my daughter up on it, set my wife up on it, logged them in, got that all set so now they can log in with Plex on their, um, you know, on their device. One of the things I did not, my router kind of blocked it you know, from going out so that you could come in from outside mm -hmm. the firewall. I have yet to kind of figure that out. I'm either going to have to do a port forward or something along those lines. I just haven't figured it out yet. But uh, to, give them the, you know, to give them access to it and share that library with them was just dynamite. So it was a very, very successful... I don't know, you know, Tony, I've, ta I've talked to him maybe three times about Plex, and each time I think, I'm going to set this up, and I never I never have, and it took my son kind of saying, you know, come on, Dad, let's, let's give Plex a try to, uh, to actually pull that up way easier, way easier than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I just, I don't know what I was doing wrong before or why. Well, I know what I was doing wrong. I wasn't converting those files. <laughs> Um, showing up, and I didn't necessarily want to do that, but but um, I did. It worked fine. Uh, you know, 80 some movies in my library. I converted overnight. Just set them up in Handbrake and uh, let them. Uh, you know, loaded them all up. While I was watching a movie, I loaded them all up in the queue. You know, you just kind of set them up and let it run all night. And I came back in the morning, and all those movies were ripped and ready to go. Yeah, Plex Plex is a real deal, and. Uh, I have yet to load it back on my uh, my Windows Home server because I'm now on 2012 Essentials. And I was thinking about maybe I would do a little VM. I have a, a Windows 7 VM that runs Media Center that all of my, uh, you know, my seat and echoes and my Xboxes connect to. So it runs Media Center that everything connects to. Um, extenders, I'm trying to think of. So I was thinking about maybe running... Just a VM just for Plex. You know, give it some dedicated hardware so it wouldn't crater everything, but it has a little bit of dedicated hardware just for itself. It, I don't think it takes much to run, to be honest, that, that server. No. I mean, it's super light. I think okay. you could put it on just about anything. And, and you know, I could it put it just right there on the, on the 2012 box. Uh, my yeah. 2011 box back in the day was just way over tasked and it, I had it on there and it was just it was crazy crazy busy speaking of that server is sitting right there there's an IC dock here this is my this is the OS I don't even remember how to get in this thing Jim it's been that long since I've been in here but there's there's the operating system inside my IC doc. Uh, this is a mirroring. I love that case. That yeah, is this is a great all time. This is my I, Windows that's Home. That's the screen. double one, right? It's got two, two, yeah, two and half in it. Yeah. Got two. Uh, I had one of those and broke it. I was so mad at myself. Yeah. Two of these little guys in here, and uh, it just it mirrors right here on the on the device. 
I don't even know what this part number is anymore. Yeah, you know, I should probably do that. I should probably pick up a couple of those and load them up with the, all the two and a half inch drives I have and throw those in the Drobo. That'd be interesting. Yeah. And then there's four two terabyte drives sitting back there. That's my data pool. And I don't know. I just I hung on to that just in case anything goes wrong with this 2012 Essentials box. But it's been you know super rock solid. So super rock solid. Okay. So we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Um, we are talking with uh, Kevin Schoon over here about the Lenovo TS140. So what happens here at Home Server Show and in the forums is there's there's always a server, right? There's always a new server, and there's always some chit chat about something. We started out with the Media Smart server. The HP Media Smart Server, and you know we moved on. We we did home builds after that with 2011, and then we moved into the uh, the HP Micro Servers. We went from the I can't even remember all the part numbers. The 54L. Then we went to the Gen 8. There were plenty of part numbers in there, and now we have uh, a couple of uh, new guys on the block. The uh, Dell T20, we've been watching that. We've been watching that price like a hawk, and guys have been buying that up and putting all sorts of operating systems on it. And now, it's the Lenovo TS140, and here to tell us a little bit about it. And you know what's inside is Mr. Schoonover. Kevin, you've got one of these, right? Yeah, I do, and uh, we'll try and flip a camera over to it and not make you seasick. Uh, a little bit bigger box than the uh, the, the Dell T20 and the uh, Lenovo TS140 are both what I would call probably mini tower kind of boxes. So bigger than the HP, but still uh, you know very capable. Uh, come with e either. Um, uh, you know, Celeron style chips or i3 style chips or Xeon style chips. And I think what got things really going is a lot of these servers were bobbing around the, you know, three to $500 price range depending on the CPU. And I think it was last week or two weeks ago, um, the floor kind of fell out on the Lenovo deal uh, of the uh, Xeon base with four gig of memory for 285 bucks. So I think anytime you can get a Xeon-based server for under $300, that's a pretty good deal. And then this week, they've uh, uh, been bopping around the $200 to $235 range for the i3 version of the same box. So, um, you know, very, very cost-effective, um, very similar designs. You know, I think uh, Intel traditionally helps people out from the point of view of if you... You know, if you want to do a uh, design uh, for a, a motherboard, they have uh, ways of uh, putting that together for you. So, you know, the two are, are fairly similar. <clears throat> but from a look and feel point of view, uh, that's the that's the uh, the guy. And uh, and yes, I've moved back from the basement back to the guest bedroom, so that is a dresser back there. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing about the Lenovo's, and I'll show this when I pull off the side, is um, every model's a little bit different. So um, one of the things to note, the two five and a quarter bays up here have a bar between them, so you cannot put one of those big, um, uh, you know, three or four drive, three and a half inch bays in it. But you could put a couple of, uh, you know, um, uh, icy docks in there to run a bunch of two and a half inch drives. Uh, two uh, uh, USB 3s on the front. Um, the top bay in this one is a little different. If you see some of the units, they come with a five and a quarter DVD player. This one has a slimline DVD and room underneath for a three and a half inch drive. So I'll put the camera down for a second and pop the side off this guy. It's a shame that they put a bar in there because, I mean, that's one thing that I'm doing on my PC is I've got a 3-in-2. I call it a 3-in-2. I don't know if that's an official nomenclature, but three, three-and-a-half-inch drives in two five-and-a-quarter, you know, spots. Mm -hmm. I really like to be able to do that. So from a, from a drive bay point of view, you've got... Um, these little plastic carriers, you've got a drive here and a drive here. 
which are the standard uh, drives for the unit. I don't know if we can see this fan, but they really did a nice job of designing the fan. It has a, a bit of a, a baffle on it to um, pull air down from down and up from the hard drive. So some, some good intelligence went into the design of that fan. Uh, so those are the two main spots. You know, normal four uh, dims. You can put up to 32 gig of memory in it. So Does have focus, Kim? Oop, can I pop back here? Focus stick. Let's see if I've got a. Uh, it's just too good looking for it not to be blurry. Did I focus in or not? <laughs> no, it's blurry. You need a focus stick. I'm going to have to pull the Logitech down, I guess. The Logitech does a little bit better. So um, plenty of adding card slots, two uh, by 16s a by one on PCI-E, uh, and a regular PCI slot on the board. Um, oddly enough, no, no USB on the board. There is a header. It looks like you could pull up a couple more USBs, but it does have um, six SATA ports on the board, so... Technically, you could run all five drives and the CD off from the onboard uh, controllers. So uh, those drive bays are those just physical bays to hold drives. They don't have a, a backplane. Right. Yep. No backplane. They're all cabled in. Okay. So I'm gonna pull off the front so you can kind of see how the other bays work on this guy. And while you're doing that, what's what's the chip on that SATA controller? Do you know? Uh, it's it's the Intel chipset. So SATA control pulls off the Intel chipset. I haven't had a lot of time to play with the box. Um, the Lenovo does a little bit of special stuff with their um, um, RAID controller. They've added a little software enhancement to the RAID controller. They have but, they have a, a means in which to get into that, right? Like it's Think Server RAID. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. So we'll uh, refocus nice here if, again. If guys want to, if you don't want to, you know, trust your RAID to, you know, a gigabyte or ASUS motherboard, you know, you just step up to one of these boxes. So in this five and a quarter bay, you've got mounts for um, a hard drive, uh, but they also include a little fan up front. So built right into the box is a fan right up front. Um, the top bay has a spot for a hard drive underneath the uh, DVD. And it has a little fan on the back. So they added cooling built right into both those slots. And then in this guy, which the front end of it is the two USB drives, there's room for another hard drive. So technically you could fit two hard drives in the swappables down here, two hard drives in these five and a quarter bays, a third hard drive right here, and, um, uh, and still have room for the DVD built in if you wanted. Or you could pop these out and put uh, some of the uh, icy docks that'll put multiple two and a half inch drives in the same slot. So quite a bit of flexibility from that point of view. Um, part of the reason I went with the Xeon, and I'll try and throw something in the show notes, is um, Intel builds some um, remote access capabilities right into their server board BIOSes. But when you, uh, when you go with the Xeon processor, you get something called uh, ATM, which is their um, virtual keyboard as well. So you get a virtual KVM on Xeon-based products. So if remote access is important to you and you want to really take advantage of that, um, it's another reason I recommend the Xeon on these kind of guys. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Now... That fan in between those two hard drives, that's specifically meant to draw air f across those two hard drives? Is that yep. Okay. It's got a little, uh, it's got, um, little channel on the top and the bottom to... Uh, actually, I shouldn't say it's, it, it pulls air from the front and diverts it up from those two. So some air comes straight out and some air gets diverted up and down to cool. So it's a diversion, kind of a block there, okay. a baffle. So you're not going to be able to like stack hard drives in there. I mean, I, I see some opportunity for you know other drives, 
if I pulled that fan out, we could do we could do something in here. But mm -hmm. um, you know, as it stands, it's a good it's a good six drive or a good five drive kind of system, just the way it stands. Yeah, or you could go four drives, and in in another bay, you could you know do a mirror of two two and a half drives, or maybe yep. even SSDs. Yeah, so it's it's uh, you know, a lot of capabilities from that point of view. Um, good. Or if you're like me, there's plenty of room for a David McCabe server drive there at the bottom of the case, <laughs> and then I'll, yeah, I always inevitably forget about it, and I pick it up and flunk, flunk, flunk. It's it's sliding around. So shifting gears for a second, just so you can kind of see the differences. This would be the Dell T20. Okay. So no five and a quarter bays up front, just the uh, just the uh, DVD slot. You've got a couple of uh, um, USB threes and a couple USB twos, and internal. And I think I left a mess in here, so if it opens and falls all over, that would be why. Or in the cave style. <laughs> in the cave server. I should be proud of me. My my essential servers are really okay. nice and clean. Is it? Did I just see a COM port? Of yeah. course, you have to have a COM port. Wow. Okay. The server. You never know when you might need to uh, put a modem on there. I uh, there's going to be a lot of folks listening might not even know what that is. <laughs> so very similar board design. No big surprise there. A little different layout on the. Uh, on the uh, add-in card slots, but up to 32 gig of memory, and uh, little different. You know, only four SATA ports out of this guy. So, any extended use on it, you're going to need to add some extra controller support for it. I love and the link just laying at the bottom of the server. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to keep those around until you turn it on. Ready to uh, shear off a, a you know a resistor on top on the motherboard. Uh, the uh, the top guy uh, kind of interesting. You can either put a DVD in there, or it fits two two and a half inch drives in top. So they did some nice thinking with that. And then these are two three and a half inch bays that use the standard Dell carrier in those. Kevin, did you make that? Is that one of your designs? No, this is Dell's. This is this is Dell's own work. Oh, looks like a, a schoon doggy special. <laughs> well, speaking of that, Jim, here yeah. it is right there. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the guys noticed there was plenty of space to throw uh, a couple more drives in here, and uh, the Dell Optiplex line had this easy removable. Uh, drive carrier, and so I picked up a couple of them. First one I just put in with uh, double-sided tape, seemed to work okay, but didn't really like it. So I uh, made a couple of bars. I don't know if you guys can see that, made a couple of bars across the bottom here, riveted those in place, and that made it a lot more structurally sound. So it uh, sits in there very nicely. Um, I've gone out for bid on. A couple of clips. You can see there's a spot here to clip on that first beam and a spot in the back to clip on the second beam. And then this would handle two more drives using the only bad part is it uses a different drive carrier than the one in the system. It, it uses a uh, um, you know, similar function but just a different look. So uh, ultimately by adding this guy in there you'd be able to do six swappable drives straight out of the box and uh, you know plenty of room in there the thing we'd need to look at is cooling and from the looks of things there's plenty of space to mount a fan on the front here or mount a fan right on here to pull air through it so you know obviously cooling is one of those things we have to address in the in the process but uh, that's that's been my latest uh, potential modification very nice and the chat room is giving me flack for the uh, COM port. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I agree. Of course, Icon's going to do that. Of 
and I, and I, rational too. He was all over it. Well, I'm they're still really useful. On board that. Yeah. Hey, you know, so, five called. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously bigger box than the uh, than the uh, uh, micro servers, but you know it seems like more and more of the guys are you know playing with uh, VMware and uh, playing with uh, Hyper V. And this gives you the ability. Both these guys will get you up to 32 gig of memory. Um, so if it's more of a learning lab kind of system, there's a lot you can do that way with it. Um, you know the and the prices are are you know, really hitting down there from a from an entry level point of view. I, I think anytime you can get a Xeon box in the you know three to four hundred dollar range, that's a that's a pretty good price point. Yeah, it's it's amazing that. Uh... The prices are getting that low, so it's crazy. I mean, you, and it's a pretty decent box too. I mean, oh, yeah. it's nothing to, no, they're they're well built. Um, there are no slouches. Yeah. Yeah, both of them are put together very uh, very nicely. Kevin, what was the retail on those again? Um. So, well, I'm forgetting now. the The lowest price I've seen on the TS140. In the Xeon was 285. Normally they run about 4, 419. Uh, you see them pop up on Amazon in the 380 kind of range, but that 285 for the Xeon was really really low. And the 235 um, for the i3 was at Newegg this week, and I think somebody just posted that uh, the same box is at Tiger Direct right now for 199. So that box with an i3 po processor, four gig of memory for two hundred bucks. Wow, that's, that's so unreal. cheap. Yeah, that's just you, you can't you can't ignore it. Yeah, that's a Windows Windows Home Server 2011 box for two hundred. Oh, yep. oh you, bucks. yeah, I'd make a great box. And, and you think about what uh, you know we we've talked in in you know depth about what three terabyte hard drives are going for these days and two terabyte hard drives and you know frankly I think Newegg had one terabyte drives for 49 bucks today so I mean it's yeah, just yeah. it's just outrageously low what a person could throw something together for well but we know what happens when hard drives start getting these ridiculously low prices it, it some disaster is looming so <laughs> if you're if you're in the hard drive market and you think they're going to get any lower don't wait. Get if you need hard drives now is the time to pick them up. So watch the deals on homeservershow.com and uh, and pick up your pick up your drives because I, I just I something's something's gonna give here. Um, companies are gonna go out of business or there's gonna be a you know a natural disaster that will drive the prices back up. So I, I'd get them now. Well, and it's a, I had dinner not too long ago with my friend that works at uh, Western Digital, and uh, you know they're the the four terabyte five terabyte six terabyte drives you know they're starting to hit obstacles that makes them difficult to move ahead and you know Seagate was touting that we would have sixty terabyte drives by 2015 and you know we're not going to get there um, they're talking about you know heat heat assisted uh, you know heads with lasers on them and we've got the helium filled drives. But my my friend was telling me one of the biggest issues that drive manufacturers run into these days isn't so much the manufacturer of the drive, it's the amount of time it takes to test a six terabyte drive. Um, in current standards by Seagate, WD, Hitachi, um, it's about two weeks to test a six terabyte drive to their standards. So when you talk about like the next big thing, they're all struggling to find what's the next big breakthrough to test drives at a much faster rate so they can get their production flowing uh, much more rapidly. Yeah. Hey, I have a question for you. Fire away. Okay, take price out of the equation on those two servers. Which one would you pick? Um, what, tough call. I'd probably I'd probably go the Lenovo right now, and it it was only because I'm I'm basing that on the knee jerk reaction that the first thing I do is I go hit their websites, I see how quickly I can find drivers manuals and the all important maintenance and service manual that tells you how to take everything apart and mm -hmm. what all the 
things do inside. And uh, I just found the Lenovo to be a little easier from that point of view. But uh, it it's kind of splitting hairs with the both both of them. I know Dell uh, definitely uh, you know has the same materials. It just was a little bit of a struggle logging into their uh, support site and and finding that stuff. Okay, so maybe buy uh, buy the Lenovo for your home server, and mm -hmm. then buy pick up a T20 and load Plex on it. How about yep. that? All right. Sounds good. Hey, uh, this just in. Hey, I, I just got a press release sent to me by uh, Christopher Kinney. He's our uh, our admin out there in the forums. QNAP has released, got a brand new series of NAS boxes they've released. And I, we're going to be talking about these things. So they uh, look like some brand new boxes for home, uh, Soho, and business models. Uh, DLNA, AirPlay, Plex. Uh, looks like they have thrown in everything uh, with the kitchen sink. So uh, this looks like a really, really cool product. And uh, Plex and Synology just keep uh, just keep trading punches out there in the in the NAS world. So <laughs> QNAP dollar sign. Jim is Jim is uh, start a new trend. I have to do it. <laughs> Being the drubble guy. It's not gonna work. Hey, um, I don't think I'm missing anything. But guys, thanks for uh, thanks for helping me out tonight. I learned I learned a lot. Good to have you back. Good to be back on. We, mm -hmm. we uh, we've got plenty to talk about. Uh, you know, we've got uh, we just got to get all the components working. So you know, making sure the internet stays up and exactly. and that we can do a show. So we got to figure out what's going on with this uh, this Surface Pro thing and the Hangout. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I did. Um, I do got to say, for Father's Day, my kids all pitched in and got me a significant gift card to the to the Microsoft Store. Ooh. So I'm kind of I'm kind of waiting to see what deals come along with um, Summit this year, and uh, and I'll probably apply that to whatever we uh, whatever they throw our way, <laughs> mini, at at Summit. <laughs> would be nice. That would be nice. It would be. I, that would be. I, I'd pick one up for sure, <clears throat> assuming that's what they're going to come out with. Well, speaking of, I just got my kit today. Oh, nice. Congratulations. That means uh, I got re-upped, Jim. Very good. Very good. It's the first, actually, it's the first time that I've had anything that says uh, surface, surface on it. On it. So yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually have that. I have all my little I Love Me awards right there behind me. Yeah, that's a good, it's a nice layout there. Mine are all stacked up. On a shelf somewhere, I should probably Pulling do a better books job. Up somewhere, I'll have to put on my new uh, little 2014 disc on there. So, hey, thanks for listening to the Home Server Show. Don't forget Amazon Prime. If you're not a subscriber, you get 30 days free. Homeservershow.com/slash/prime. Just go try it. It's not gonna kill you. It's actually kind of cool. That's been 264. Hey, let's not wait three weeks uh, before we do another one. Jim and I have a, a schedule just chock full of cool stuff that we'll be talking about. And don't forget that meetup September 20th. Get out there in the forums, homeservershow.com slash forums for Mr. Kevin Schoonover. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. For Jim, as always, thank you, sir. You bet, Dave. I'm your host, David McCabe. We'll see you in the forums. Good night. Good night. There we go. We just did a podcast. Yay. We got one done. All right, uh, YouTubers. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to hold if you want to check out Surface Geeks, we're just going to kind of run down the street. Surfacegeeks.net. There's a live button at the top there. We're going to be broadcasting from there. Everybody in the chat room, thank you guys. Thanks guys. All right, get to go home now. Jim, go home. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nothing guys. Like staying in the studio. All right, Dave. Good night. Good night. We'll see you. We'll see you on the other side. I'll try and listen on the way home. Okay. See you. All right. Bye. Take care. See Thanks, you, Kevin. Kevin.